So talk to us about the TPP first, which is sort of dead from the US point of view. But if the US were to decide it might like to get back in, would that be on the table? What would you want from the US? Well, it's more than on the table, Bonnie. We're actually keen for that to happen. Uh, the 11 of us that have come together to form what is now called the TPP-11, uh, we represent $13.7 trillion worth of economic activity. Uh, we have left the door open for the US to come back. Uh, we weren't surprised, but we were disappointed when President Trump uh, took the decision to withdraw the US from the TPP. But if there's an opportunity for the US to consider coming back, then we think that would be a terrific outcome. When you say an opportunity, what do you mean exactly? If the US were to ask, would that be enough? Well, ultimately what we've done with the TPP-11 is, is essentially replicate what, well, we've kept what was in the TPP, the original agreement, including the United States. But we've suspended a number of provisions, and the provisions that we suspended were the provisions that in many respects reflected uh, the main offensive interests from the United States. So what we do is we put pause effectively on that. We've kept all the market access arrangements in place uh, because what that means is it creates the incentive for the US to take the decision, we hope, to say, yes, we want to be part of this uh, you know, regional agreement. We want to be able to provide some trade stewardship and investment stewardship. Uh, and if they chose to come back, then we'd be able to implement the provisions that are currently suspended. The US is already put tariffs on things like aluminum and steel and is looking to do a lot more. Would you want those rolled back in order for the US to rejoin a, a multi-country partnership? Well, look, I've got some concerns about some of the decisions as they seem to be tracking at this point in time, and we've got to resolve some of those, and indeed that'll be the focus of some of the discussions that I'm going to have in uh, Washington DC uh, tomorrow, later today, and on the weekend. Uh, ultimately, though, there is a decoupling between those discussions and the TPP. I mean, look, fundamentally, this is a decision for President Trump in terms of what he'd like to do uh, with respect to the TPP. Uh, the deal has changed from what it was, and I believe, fundamentally, and the Prime Minister of Australia believes, as does Japan and other countries, that there is a good opportunity for the United States to come back to the TPP table. It will be a good deal for America, a good deal for those countries uh, that have signed the current TPP-11 agreement. If the president and his team dismisses that out of hand, what else do you want out of tomorrow's meeting? You've got the top three trade people in the country in that sure. room, along with the top of your country. Well, I think there's a couple of things happening. The first is that I, I, I think it's unlikely that there'll be an out-of-hand dismissal. I was really encouraged and buoyed by the Prime Minister's speech in... Uh, not the Prime Minister, sorry, by the President's speech in Davos when he made it clear that uh, the US would consider possibly looking at the TPP again. So. I think the door's been cracked open a little bit there and, and I want to engage in a constructive way uh, with the Trump administration. If we can help to create incentive for the US to come back, that's terrific. But in terms of other key priorities from Australia's bilateral relationship perspective, uh, we in particular have interests around infrastructure. Uh, we've seen President Trump outline a bold vision for infrastructure across the United States. We have a federal system and we could share a lot of that. Yeah, you're making the case to share some of that. H how? What exactly do you mean? Do you want to invest in some of these uh public-private partnerships in the US or just give advice? Well, all of the above. Uh, Australia's got over $2.2 trillion in national savings. We've got one of the largest national savings pools. And when you consider we're a very modest population of 24 million, uh, it speaks to what has been a policy focus for us for some time. So, yes, we've got finance that we can bring to the table. We've also got the experience of public-private partnerships. Um, we've had a mixed experience. Some have been really successful, mm -hmm. some haven't. But we've learned through all of that process. And we believe, especially given we're a federal system as well, that we've got a lot of experience around project design, construction, management, as well as financing that we can share with the US. So you're hopefully going to be, uh, hopefully from your point of view, going to be giving some advice to the US. You're also taking some advice, it seems, from Donald Trump, Malcolm Turnbull, talking about taking down the corporate tax rate in Australia now. What else is the Australian Prime Minister going to uh, adopt of President Trump's tactics? <laughs> well, look, we will see, but certainly corporate tax is a key one for us. I mean, we've seen Australia over time slip up, unfortunately, in, relative to our competitors in terms of the OECD corporate tax equivalent and we want to make sure that declines over time uh, and as a government we're very committed to doing that because we know capital is uh, more liquid than it's ever been, uh, it's more mobile than it's ever been, labour is more mobile than it's ever been, we need to be able to attract key people that are building wealth. Speaking of the amount of dollars that Australia and Australia pension funds, you know life insurers, endowments that have to invest and a lot of that comes to the United States. What do you make of the Australian dollar and its level right now? What would you be more comfortable with a dollar at? 
Look, the long run average sees it around 72 cents against the greenback. I mean, ultimately, we will see what happens. Clearly, um, there's going to be a push in terms of repatriation of funds with the reduction of the US company tax rate. Um, that'll be sitting against, I guess, a move now towards riskier markets and some emerging markets. So I don't know how that's going to play out. If I did, um, I probably wouldn't be in politics. But, um, but certainly, the long run average sits as the, you know, as the benchmark against which we can measure performance. Sure, but as a trade minister, are, are you more in favor of a weaker Aussie dollar or a stronger one? Oh, look, I think the notion that a weaker dollar is a positive for a country is a false notion. I mean, yeah. It really is, in my view, the definition of a false economy. Um, we need to make sure that we build gradually over time, I believe, a stronger dollar, but that's got to be in the context of remaining competitive. Talk to us a little bit about the economic health of Australia. You've got growth at, what, 2.8% or so this year is the forecast, and uh, CPI inflation 2.2%, not too bad. Unemployment 5.4%. Any concerns for the Australian economy? I know there are a few out there. Look, I think conditions continue to improve. I mean, Australia is incredibly well placed, obviously, fastest growing region in the world. Um, we're in our 27th year of continuous economic growth. It's a, a new world record in terms of developed economies, and that's been a consequence of a commitment to economic reform over many years. So we've got in place the building blocks to remain competitive. We want to continue to attract foreign investment into the country. It helps us reach our full economic potential and uh, we're very focused on that. And you know, That's my role as investment minister as well, to attract that capital to Australia. But I've got to say, overall, uh, the picture in terms of Australia's economy is a healthy one.